Hey, what is up guys? Klausnex here, and today we are here with Mohamed Ibshara. Mohamed is from Libya, South Africa? North Africa. North Africa, and moved to Canada to pursue an education. He studied business information technology at Red River College and just graduated, right? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. As well as some time at the University of Manitoba studying computer engineering. He's responsible for numerous tech startups such as Binary Vision, Arvin, and most recently took up the role as lead project manager for BetEase. Links to all of these different startups will be in the description if you're interested in checking them out. So Mohamed and I originally both met working at the YMCA and we bonded over our shared beliefs and the, the potential that life has and how important it is for us to leave a legacy in the world. I remember looking forward to going to work and talking about our latest projects and our latest ideas and uh, just uh, sharing and communicating ideas, bouncing off each other, and um, honestly, mostly just the, the latest Gary Vee video. For this reason, I found Mohammed to be the perfect guest to discuss the subject of legacy. Thank you for being on the show, and thank you for being the first guest. How are you feeling so far? Well, really good. <laughs> um, thank you for inviting me to be um, your guest today. It's, um, it's really a pleasure. It brings back memories when we were just talking about ideas, and um, yeah. it's, it's awesome, yeah. Just catching up about our times at the YMCA. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, so first question, what does legacy mean to you? Um, for the most part, legacy is actually not caring about the currency. When there is something that you love, you got to pursue it um, as much as you can uh, without worrying about um, how much money you're going to make out of it and just enjoying the process because at the end, you're going to leave a print behind you. That's right. And that is what legacy means, especially um, in today's age where there's 200 businesses coming up every day and... Um, not all of them are actually going to make it. So how yeah. are you going to leave something valuable um, to people where that after your life, people are going to remember you with? Yeah. 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 I mean, a lot of people get they get stuck in this thinking of um, waiting for their next paycheck or doing only what they're doing for the money. And I mean, I've met a lot of people that they're not sure if they're going to take this next job, but the money is really, really good. And I've learned that that's kind of a flag now because I almost want to advise them against doing something for the money, particularly because they said, yeah. I'm doing it for the money. Yeah. Or like, my job sucks, but the pay is good. It's like, well, that's most of your life right there. Absolutely, yeah. And that's where you lose um, control of your life because you're just going to be a slave to that paycheck. You're waiting. You're just waiting for that paycheck and you will never be able to uh, do something great with your life or leave a legacy. And there, are, it's not easy. Like, yeah, that you need that paycheck to survive, and that's why it's not. It's not for everybody. Not everybody is able to do it because you have to sacrifice your life for yeah. for a very long time. Sometimes, you because you have to still get that paycheck and then do what a, what we call it side hustle. Right. Yeah, yeah. So the seven to two. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, it's not easy, definitely, but at the end, it pays off. Yeah, and that's. Yeah. I guess that's exactly what you're saying about loving the process and that took me a while to, to even figure out what that means to love the process yeah it, was, it wasn't like I, I used to just listen to like what does that even mean love the process you 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 feel it when you start doing it that's yeah because yeah. you enjoy that um you hustle you hustle and then you see something you see like you produce something at the end yeah and it's like your baby and yes. you're, that feeling is is priceless yes i know that's how i feel yeah after I put out every YouTube video and like maybe 20 people watch it, but I'm still proud of but it. But exactly, yeah. like it, it, it's, you don't have to, like it's not gonna take one, it's not gonna take a year or two to actually be up there. Like you have to put into work without thinking about what's gonna happen. Like yeah. you just have to focus on what you like and enjoy it as much as you can. Yeah, so that's living without the fruit for your labor. Basically. Exactly, yeah. And then it will come with time. It comes like yeah. you. You'd be surprised. Like if you do what you do for as long as you can, eventually something will come out of it. Yeah. 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 Patience is patience is key there. Oh yeah, absolutely. So what? When did you start to realize this? At what point in your life did you start to like think this way? To be honest, like um, I like I grew up in a family where a portion of it is just business mentality. Did not even finish school. Some of them don't even know how to write their names. 
and my other half of the family is all doctors and engineers. And it's funny how um, the business ones like are leading their lives much better than the professional ones. I, really? I, I'm surprised, right? Um, they didn't put in any time in school, but they learned life. They learned the real market, mm -hmm. the real problem. School, they teach you problems in the books. Then you come out to life and you're not ready. Like it's something completely different. You're not prepared. Yeah. So I was going to take on the direction to becoming a doctor um, for some reason. But um, I, did, I realized that later. I didn't know what I want to do in my life. I wanted to be a doctor. Didn't work out. I wanted to be an engineer. Didn't work out. I was broke as hell for, yeah. for a very long time. And I'm like, what am I doing with my life? I'm yeah. broke and I'm even, I'm not going to, nothing is going to happen. I'm just paying more to school. I need to do something right now. So I started with just like, I had just had an idea. I was, I just moved to Canada and um, uh, I had a few people who were just calling me sometimes from back home. Do you want to come to Canada? So I was like, why shouldn't I just start a company and then just call it a travel agency and then just help them with their applications? <laughs> yeah. That was the beginning of every business venture that I am in right now. Wow. Yeah. So that worked out really well. And then just, it opened up a lot of doors in my, in my head. And that's when I started seeing tech. And I was like, where should, where is, where is the biggest opportunities in business? Yeah. And um, I remember the, um, the tech piece that got me into it was Flappy Bird, if you heard of it, the <laughs> game. <laughs> Who hasn't heard of Flappy Bird? Yeah, exactly. So um, I'm looking at that's that at that point I was I didn't know what I should continue like where I should continue should I just continue in business should I go engineering I didn't know and then I saw Flappy Bird and I'm like this is this is it like technology like if this really? guy made fifty thousand dollars a day from a game that took him three hours and there's got to be something <laughs> behind that yeah yeah. That's true. Yeah, and then if I I liked it, and I if you love what you do, then yeah. something good will come out of it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So I, I was it around that same time you realized that that wouldn't be possible with a like a traditional nine to five for job. Yeah, because um, what um, my situation, I was it was it was a little bit harder for me because I am a I wasn't a student visa. So, right. first of all, I cannot violate my student visa and I have to be a full-time student at all times. Right. So, I could not let that go. Second of all, I needed money to survive. So, I had expenses and I also had to pay for school. And that actually, I think that was positive more than it was negative because yeah. that pushed me. Because how am I going to make, make enough money to pay for my term next term? How am I going to mm. make money to survive? So that opened up a lot of um, ideas that I had and I had to execute them really quick yeah. to make money to survive. And yeah. I still, like I worked at the YMCA at the front, uh, as a front desk representative yeah. and I, I, I had to do that. I couldn't sacrifice that. Yeah, you had to put in your time there. I had to put in my time and it was not like it was, I did not have a life for a long time between school, the YMCA and my businesses that I just started while I was a full-time student. It was not easy. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's daunting to have that overhang on you the whole time that you have to fulfill Canada's requirements before you can pursue your dreams. Exactly. But it's, again, it's patience, right? Like yeah. if you, if you do it long enough, something will happen at the end. And I just graduated and it's amazing, like as soon as I had that um, weight off my shoulders, I did not have to spend that much time on both uh, my regular job and my um, school. It was just way easier, yeah. like you have so much time in your hand, you can, you can really do something. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. I, I have one more class left and then I'm out of, out of the system. So I'm already starting to, like, I have the luxury of phasing out. It's not just yeah. like I have a full course load and then bang, there's life. So I've been kind of phasing myself and I've already started to notice just how free and liberating it feels. It's like, what? I can do the things I want to do with my time now? Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you don't, and um, like when I started, like after that, I, I was concerned to be like honest at the beginning, like how it's not a guaranteed paycheck anymore. But I had to make yeah. the decision, should I just be a slave and waste like this much time? Like 40 hours a week is yeah. a lot of time. And I was like, I'm going to try it out without having the job. I'm going to focus on what I want to do. And I couldn't stop. Like, you just you just sink in. Like, yeah. you just you can't get out. It's, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. So, okay, tell me about your, your experience because... I remember when you were on this this grind to develop Arvin, and this was like like twenty three hours a day, kind of process, right? Yeah, that was um, that was big. Um, 
It was. It started as a grocery delivery company. Yeah. And this is like something that I learned a lot from business. Sometimes you start off as something and then you keep pivoting, you pivot, you pivot until you end up with something completely different sometimes because you go with the market. If the market doesn't care about whatever you're producing, then you should not produce that. That's like right. you have to care about the market. Um, so Arvin, like I spent a lot of time with, um, with a few co-founders and um, we wanted to develop that grocery delivery company. After that, it became a... Um, conversational UI, like a some, like an artificial intelligence system right. where you talk to it and it finds out what you want. And we went ahead and we built it. The product was really expensive because we wanted to make something good. And we didn't know if it's actually going to work out after that. So we met with big companies like Uber and we discussed like the idea with them. And like we just went to them asking for help. Like we're doing this startup and yeah. we need help. And we got few advices from few um, good startups in Canada. And we've decided to switch that over because of competition and because of cost. It's not gonna it's not gonna be cheap to start competing with fifty billion dollar companies. <laughs> um, so we switched it to just a tech framework where you can actually apply multiple things to it. And it worked right. out like that. It wasn't at the point, it seemed like the biggest thing that uh, might happen, but that's with every idea. Like you, you pursue it until the end, until something nice happen out of it. And um, right now, BetEase, um, like once we started working with BetEase, we found out that a lot of the things that we learned in Arvin and we built in Arvin could be applied yeah. in, in, in many companies. And um, now we actually... The plan is to launch multiple apps built on Arvin framework. Yeah. Who yeah. would have thought that Arvin would have been a, a stepping stone? I know. It was, yeah, it was, I remember like just a year and a half ago, um, we had a ramp up weekend where we actually, we literally, I, I was up with my, um, with my partner for almost 23 hours uh, yeah. and we coded 12,000 lines of code in just one night. And we had to because we had to compete, and it was it was tough, and that that's yeah. that's the real business life. Yeah, I remember that you had that, and then you had to keep up your other responsibilities. Exactly, that was on top of my regular job, on top <laughs> of school, on top of everything. Like it was not, yeah, yeah, it was not just a break from life to focus on one thing. Yeah, and you had like like what you had like three different nights where like times of the day when you would sleep. Yeah, so you had like, like three days in one day. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, you have you ha you ha you you become creative. Like when it comes when you're too busy, sometimes you forget to eat and you forget to sleep. You literally look at the time and like, oh my god, like it's just this been this long. Like I need to sleep. Yeah. So it's until it gets to that point, and still, like even with that, it might not be enough. But you realize that um, if it's something you're enjoying or not, because if it's something you're not enjoying, you're definitely going to give up and try to find something else. Yeah. And if you're enjoying it, it's addictive. It's you never stop. It's true. You yeah. live and breathe it. Exactly. Yeah. You, like you wake up in the morning just thinking about it and like, what's next? How can I make this better? And Yeah. And you, yeah. Can, you can't really turn that off. It, it, it's hard. It's yeah. like, yeah, you, you lose a lot, a little bit of your life. But I believe that it's temporary. Like you lose your social life sometimes. Like I, I, I believe that there should be some balance, but you shouldn't party every night. You shouldn't like, there's no point of wasting your time if you're 20, 25, like you're young. Like you need to work right now and then everything will be easy. Yeah. 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 And, and work really hard at what you want, but also to remember to, I guess, try new things while you are young because you don't want your entire life to slip away so it's not not slip away but i mean like to, to take the time to experience things and not just become so i guess i lost in your work not that that's yeah. like like bad to get lost in your work but i mean that balance is really hard it's it's hard yeah it's and sometimes you lose control like sometimes you get you, 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 like it's things get hard and you'd be like oh like why am i doing this you think yeah. about giving up but then it's those moments that defines your legacy yeah. so if you yeah. keep on it if you hustle if you take the pain and go through it at the end it will it will be much more fun yeah yeah and I, I remember like uh well my youtube is kind of it was just a hobby but it's kind of become a, somewhat a part of my life and it's kind of become a bit of a project 
I remember um, when I started my YouTube account, I had like uh, I, I was subscribed to myself, so there yeah. was like a subscriber there, and then I had a couple other Google accounts, so I subscribed just to give myself a better image. And then I eventually got to like around 11 subscribers, and I held that down at 11 subscribers for probably like a, like a few months, almost half a year. No one, wow. would, well, no one would watch my stuff. I had no exposure. And I remember watching like, you know, like I look at big YouTube channels, and they talk about how rough they had it. And they're like, oh, I can't believe it took us a thousand subscribers a year to get. And it's like, what? Like a thousand in a year? Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, maybe this isn't for me. So I've noticed that... Um, you have you do have to love the process and not set your expectations for your reward yeah you know not always thinking about what you're going to get out of it but more what you're you're giving to the world exactly what what value are you giving to the world yeah. because once without giving value nobody's going to give you attention yeah so uh, the next question i have for you is that what are some of the priorities in your life or elements that you find essential especially when you're like it's hard to find the balance and you just want to work all the time like what do you you hold important in your life to be honest it's um it's that's a very tough question right now because what happened to me is that everything blended in oh yeah so my work became my life my life became my work and it's just um like that's when what happens when you love the process you start working with people the same as you, like people who love the process. And sometimes yeah. we're sitting at work, we're not working, we're just having fun, we're just talking and we're just enjoying, we're partying. So yeah. we mix that and to be honest, like um, trying to keep, like it's, you have to focus on keeping a legacy, like keeping, keeping a value, like always providing a value. And sometimes it's hard to actually, like you might work, but it might be a little bit of like, you're an autopilot so you don't know what's going on oh, so you yeah. need to keep reminding yourself of your actual values of what 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 are you in it for like yeah. what do you yeah what is your goals and you have to always think about the big picture and not lose track of that yeah yeah so do you uh, look up to anybody in this realm does anybody influence you or inspire you like how do you stay motivated? yeah like I there are definitely um, a few um my top inspirer of all times is Elon Musk like yeah. he's he, he's great um Steve Jobs too and there's definitely a lot that you can learn from so many others too um I mean I listened to Gary Vee for a very long time and it yeah. was really good and it motivated me and it I would say it was one of the reasons why I'm still in it till now yeah. because it, at tough times um Eric Thomas uh, yeah like those guys they're amazing yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's Elon Musk is has become such a motivational figure now. Yeah, because like look whatever what he's doing, he went through a lot. Yes. I think if there's one person in the world who did not have it easy, it would be him. Like yeah. He, he yeah. He he was gambling with a lot, like a lot of money, like hundreds of millions of dollars trying things. <laughs> yeah, that's but cuz he believed in it. Um he did the actual work. I remember one of his um one of my favorite things that he say all the time, always outwork your competition. If your competition works 40 hours a week, you work 80 hours a week yeah. and eventually you will do better than them. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So, and he's right. So, uh, how do you think that someone creates a legacy? That's a tough question. That's that very, is, it's a very yeah. blunt, but I mean like, um, it, it's, it's simple for us because yeah. we have our vision, but we kind of have an understanding of what kind of impression we want to leave on the world. So how, like if you're to go to an average person who's struggling to figure out what they want to do with their life, trying to explain to them or somebody listening who might not understand what yeah. that even means legacy. Well, simply like I'll put this simply, if you do what you love, like don't let paycheck, don't let location, don't let anything affect that. If you love something, just do that. If you do that, that is enough of a legacy. Like you would leave a legacy. You would, you would be a person who lived for what they wanted to live for. That's right. Right. And I believe that is the first step. Yeah. Just do what you love. If you love fitness, go for it. You love tech, go for it. You love cars, go start selling cars. Yeah. Don't wait. Don't spend an extra minute doing something that you're not enjoying. Yeah. And you and just by doing that, you're going to influence the people in your life, the people around you. You're going to have a ripple effect. 
even if, if you're not aware of it, just by pursuing and doing the things you love, regardless of what anyone else thinks. Exactly, especially if it was hard. Like if it's something, if for example, you're depending so much on your job and you had to transition between that job and something you love and it was the process in between was really difficult mm -hmm. and it took you a while, then that is a legacy because people are going to look up to you and will be like, wow, like he, how could you pull this off? Yeah. Right? I don't think you necessarily have to be working in the job that's because the job is majority of your life but you don't that doesn't have to be how you leave your legacy it can be what you do after you get home from work exactly and it could also be your job like yeah. to well, some, it can be yeah. Both. yeah and it could be like if you're if you love your job like if you work if you work as a salesperson in company x and that's you love that then you can you can leave a legacy there yeah yeah or with your family it doesn't have to be job related yeah it, yeah yeah, exactly. That all comes back to the ripple effect and how you affect people's lives. And you may not even actually know why or how you and are. You and might, you might not even know it. Like, um, I'll give you an example. Like when, we, like, when we were working at the YMCA, there were times that I got affected. Like, I was about to give up and then next day I'm at the Y, depressed, working there. And, and you come there and you're so happy about a video you just, <laughs> you, you just published. And I'm like, yeah. that, that inspires me and that yeah. leaves an effect. So you don't even know when sometimes you're actually leaving an effect. <laughs> That's true. Even yeah. if that video totally sucked and nobody watched it. <laughs> the fact that you actually did it and yeah. knowing that nobody's nobody's watching it or maybe a few people watched it, but you still did it and you still kept going. That is, that itself is a legacy sometimes. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, the, your legacy is that that yeah. ripple effect on the people's lives around you. It's Absolutely. Because after you're gone, that ripple is going to continue after the people you've uh, Im impacted. And and it's uh, exponentially. Like it's you left it on multiple people. Those people will eventually leave it on other people. It's it's, yeah. and at the at the end, it all leads back to what you three words you said or yeah yeah like five minutes conversation you had with someone or yeah. one thing you did not knowing that even no one maybe is watching so you, you said earlier in the podcast about leaving a footprint i love that i always think about leaving a footprint because yeah. it's very it's it's so visual like your life just made a, an actual impact in the universe or or whatever so why do you think that it's important to leave that footprint why don't you just go along your life and not even bother leaving a footprint um well it depends on each person's goals of life and definition of satisfaction and yeah. what they want to achieve um some people are just fine with whatever is happening in their life and they're letting their life leading them that's true i believe i believe in the opposite i believe in creating your own opportunities and that's a part of it like if you if you work for that footprint and then you eventually leave it like the feeling the satisfaction the like if you change people's lives to the better that's that is yeah. a feeling that no money in the world can be equivalent to yeah and i, I th yeah i think one thing that's really influenced me to leave a legacy and i mean that's a long that's that's gary v's biggest line is one life when it kind of hits you that you're gonna die and not like in a scary way but you're gonna die and you only get one shot it really changes the way that you view your life yeah. And the opportunities that you're going to pursue. And after you're gone, what are you leaving for your family? What are you leaving for the rest of the world? You know, how are you going to be remembered? And I don't know if that's so, if that's kind of like a, uh, an existential crisis. Like you're going to die. You're scared if people are going to forget you or not. Maybe. But like that might be a small influence. But I think yeah. that it's just important to consider the, your lasting effect. That's true. And uh, yeah, and living, yeah, living for something, knowing that once you're gone like you've left that one thing behind and people now remember it um it doesn't have to be steve jobs legacy but um, <laughs> it could literally be something yeah. so small and few people know about it and it's like you said it could be your family that's it yeah yeah it, it's like steve jobs in specific it, it, he's he's like one of the most current examples of leaving a legacy because he 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 died what a few years ago. Yeah, no, and no, yeah. His his company is still going strong, and everyone remembers him by his company. You know that will never die. Kids who did not know him, yeah, remember him. <laughs> so it's yeah, yeah, that is one of the biggest footprints in the world right now, yeah. on the tech world. Yeah, and I, like I even yeah. I watch videos from people who are leaving legacies or they've done ins incredible inspiring things and Steve Jobs is, is one of them usually and it's just crazy that he's 
just because he did what he did, that ended up somehow in my life inspiring me. And also, if you look at Steve Jobs in his life days, um, he was saying just do, he was just doing it because he loves it. Yeah. He did not he did not intend for it to go that way, but he kept doing it because he loved the process. He loved what he's doing. And then he did it good. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have an idea as to what you think you want your legacy to be? No, I don't want to take this on like a dark path no. or anything. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't have, I can't tell you I want to produce this one thing mm-hmm. that will change people's right. lives. Um, but I do want to have impact. Like I, I, I want to leave impact on few people. Yeah. Like I, I mostly to like I want people to love the entrepreneurship like business so yeah. if I could leave a little bit of impact in that field that would be amazing um, it's not easy but I'm yeah. I'm enjoying the process I'm not thinking much that way yeah because I believe that go like enjoying the process and working hard will result to that yeah. eventually yeah and I mean that's even that much of an understanding is really good because I mean we're both fairly young yeah and we have a pretty good understanding of the legacy so i think that's a really good foundation for us Mm -hmm. uh, building our lives on so even if you're not really sure what you want to do with with your life it's good to consider what kind of influence you're going to have regardless of what you're doing if you're knitting baskets or building cars that's true yeah yeah so um where do you see your life in about 10 or 15 years from now Roughly, oh, I, like it's it's so hard to envision because we don't know where yeah. our lives are going to take us. I'm probably doing the same thing, waking up every day, enjoying what I'm doing, and yeah. not caring about things that I don't enjoy. Do you have any like milestones that you kind of want to hit? Um, like I, I like it, it changes every year, and the secret is to actually adapt and whatever it is this year that you think is the best thing you should do, just pursue that. Um, I am, uh, like, knowing that I am in the tech industry, I want to have, I want to build an empire of apps Mm. that helps people's, like, that changes people's lives. Because maybe one of these apps will actually end up being something useful for the whole planet. So yeah. wow. that's, and I'm going to keep, work, like, it's apps are fun, and um, I enjoy the process of yeah. building them. So I'm just going to continue doing that, and I don't see myself changing that at all. No, that's good. That's, yeah. I mean, that's such a tough question to answer because, I mean, we both love the process, and I think that we both keep a pretty open mind as to what can happen. Yeah. I mean, I have a vision for where I want my life to go, and I have a couple milestones I want to hit along the way, but I'm open to... Whatever happens, you know. Because who knows what hits you like five years later? Yeah. Like it's the you're you love this thing now, and yeah. you should, yeah. Yeah, I mean, who knows what tech is going to come out? What new opportunities are co- going to come out? What the next social mm-hmm. media will be? Because I mean, like I always think of, um, like Elliot Hulse and how he lived his his life, and he always talked about how when he was getting into the health and fitness industry, he said, "One day I'm going to be speaking in a stadium." Um, motivating and inspiring hundreds of thousands of people but he ended he did end up doing that but not in front of a stadium it was in front of a camera so when he yeah. started his vision um the tech just wasn't there yeah you know? exactly so we yeah. don't know what yeah. what's going to bridge the gap between yeah. our, where we are and our vision yeah so i mean i think what i kind of know i want my legacy to be what footprint i want to leave for me there's 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 the, uh, I guess, the physical, you can see it, you can envision it, is that I would love to have a gym. I'd love to have my name on the door. I'd love to pass it down to my family, and I'd love them to remember their grandfather and what he did. And, yeah. you know, just to, to see my name on the door, there's that very visual legacy that I want to leave. Yeah. And then there's also, I guess, that the influence of the ripple effect. And the, how, many, yeah. how many people's lives I can affect along the way. So, and... I don't know, man. That's that's my twenty three year old's version well, of legacy. Yeah. So, which is amazing. Who knows? <laughs> maybe five years from now, we will have another podcast and yeah. see what what's yeah. What, yeah. what are we thinking then? Yeah. In 10, 15 years, we'll see where our lives actually. End exactly. Up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like Gary Vee says, we have time. Yeah. Like t- we shouldn't. We should just hustle right now and just do our best. And as long as we're doing what we're enjoying. That's right. So I guess kind of the, the underlying message for this podcast is to do the things you enjoy, love the process, and have faith in where it's going to take you. Keep, you know, just kind of keep an open mind to where it's going to take you. And uh, 
I would start developing a vision because vision is, is critical and it's everything. It's what gets you out of bed in the morning. People who are um, motivated by their own lives don't need motivation to get out of bed every morning. You know, people like me and Muhammad, we don't need that motivation constantly every single day because we have a vision, you know, and we keep that fueled by doing what we love. So, I mean, that, that can tie into legacy because you're working and, and doing, the, you're, you're, you're creating your life and you're thinking about the impact you're going to have. And that can be motivation all on its own. So I think with that, we're probably going to wrap up the podcast. I think this was really good. This was a really good conversation. Yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. Yeah. So if you listen to the podcast and you liked it, please leave a like and a comment as to another podcast idea. You know, I'm kind of working my way through lists, but if you have any ideas as to kind of what isn't talked about a lot or something in the health and fitness industry you don't think gets enough like, uh, be sure to check out some of the things Muhammad is working on. That'll be in the uh, the link in the description and uh, stay tuned for more videos and the next podcast. Claus next out.